Okay. Most importantly is being intentional about every decision that you make. Every decision you make matters. How you eat, how you pray, how you deal with people, everything that you do, it matters. So this year we're talking about being intentional about every decision. First and foremost, that requires that you be reflective over your life. What does that mean? That means that you are taking time to think about how you're doing life. Does that make sense? Because what most people do, we get in what they call the rat race, and all we do is what? We just go and go and go, and then we habitually do the same thing every day, expecting a different what? Result. It doesn't work that way until you take a time out and you reflect on really where am I at. When life gets tough, take a what? Give yourself some grace to take a time out. That's your reset, right? Making sure that you give yourself a reset. That gives you time to refocus, rededicate your life, Recommit, and most importantly, be accountable to yourself first and to those around you. I talked about it this morning. If he has one standard, you got another, she has another standard, he has another, you have another, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because what happens is, you have one standard, that person has a lower standard, and you're like, hey, we're working together as a team, we're never gonna achieve, you might achieve what you want in life, but you're not gonna have that person achieve what they want because you haven't come alongside them to help them what? Lift them up and get them out of where they are. Make sense? That means you gotta care about the people around you. Next thing is you gotta be willing to what? Learn. Be curious. Ask questions. Don't be afraid. You can't wait till the workout starts and then be like, hey coach, what I what? What I got? It's kinda like going on the field, game's already started, time's already started ticking, like, what am I supposed to do? It's too what? Too late, game's in, right? And the other part of that is communicate. Part of the issue that we had tonight, you got so tough, you start focusing only on who? Right, everybody does it. And you lose sight of what's actually happening around you. There's moments that you could be impacting someone else's life, but you're so focused on because you're tired, you're frustrated, you may be like, man, oh man, it's a long day today. You got all this stuff running through your head and you're missing opportunities. Well, you could be impactful on somebody's life, right? You gotta do it when it's hard, not when it's easy. You gotta do it when it's hard. All the great ones figure out how to do it. They all do. They understand how to communicate, they know how to lock in, they know how to pull people up out of their stuff and be like, hey, you got this. Let's go, come on, keep digging. That's why you hear my voice, come on. I'll be like, hey, come on, you got it, you got it, you got it, right? You gotta be adaptable. We don't always have all the answers, right? Have time adjustment, they call it in sports. What we're doing is not what? It's not working. You got to look at your life. What I'm doing is not working. You need to change it. You need to adapt, look at it, fix it, change it, and adapt quickly so you can get create the success you want. Make sense? Be adaptable. Don't keep doing the same thing over expecting a different result. You got to be coachable. Right? Coaches get on you. I've had a lot of great ones, man. I've been blessed to have a lot of great ones. Right? All of them taught me something. You got to be coachable. You gotta be a person that can take correction. Everything's not gonna be like, oh yeah, great job. Sometimes it's like, hey, you gotta fix that. That's not good enough. Dig deeper, right, when it hurts. Be passionate. Life is about passion. You can't redo time, man. You can't get time back. Once that time is gone, it's gone. It ain't no redos. So that's why you gotta respect time and respect days every day. When you wake up in the morning, got to be passionate. One of the greatest gifts my brother who got killed by a drunk driver gave to me was this. He gave me the gift of respecting time. Right? It's a tragic situation as a 13-year-old boy. However, as I learned, matured, and grew through that tragedy, the triumph that I got from it was gratitude for life. 24 hours, that's all I got. That's my motto. The next 24 hours, I'm going to be the best person I can for everybody around me. That's what I got. I don't worry about tomorrow. If I think about that, I'm missing today. Be present. The moment you have is the one that's in front of you, not the one behind you. Not the one that's tomorrow. You got this one. So you got to wake up with a different mindset. Got to be something in your eyes. I see it. When I look at people, I can always see it in their eyes. Right? I can tell when they're serious and when they're not serious. I may not never say it. I may not never come up and be like, you're not serious. You're not locked in. But I've been, I know and been around enough people who are serious and those who not, I have learned how to discern through it now. Right? There's a feeling you get when you're around somebody who is. Right? Your effort matters. People are always watching you. At your work. 
and your family. Your kids are watching you. Your family's watching you. People are watching you. And you need to live your life like that. God is watching you. God is watching you. Every decision, every thought you make, you got to be thinking about, man. I got to live my life as like somebody's what? Watching me. Yeah, somebody's watching you. And you got to be accountable to that. You got to be responsible for that. Lastly, you can't make excuses. You can't come in this building. I'm not going to give you an excuse. If Mama Rose can roll her butt in here on Tuesdays and Thursdays and get up on that walker and do, you, you looking at me talking about my knee hurt? <laughs> Bro, you better get up out of here. You ain't paralyzed. I ain't trying to hear it because my perspective is different than yours because of who I engage and interact with. Your perspective changes based on your interaction with people, how you engage people. So if I got a lot of experience engaging multiple, very different people, right? My perspective is always going to be different. Whereas if you haven't experienced that, then you're going to be like, well, my knee, my knee is... I know because you don't, you haven't sat with Mama Rose and had to pick her up, right? And have to support her. You don't know what that feels like. Right? All you focus on is you. You got the ability to move your what? Your legs and your arms. She doesn't. You do. But now I've had to walk with her for the last six and a half years, picking her up, helping her get up and do something. She don't ever make a come com she ever complain. Nope. Nope. No complaints. No excuses. Be willing to leave. You gotta get out front. Most curious place you can be is out front, right? When I'm training these kids, I'll be like, hey, get your buddy here. And they'd be like, who you want you? Get up front. Be the first one. You're not the last one. Be the first one to work. Be the last one to leave. You got to be like that. Execution, excellence, everything you do. You're doing it because you're trying to honor God. You're trying to set an example for people around you who are lazy. That's just brass tacks. There's lazy people in the world. I'm not saying people are lazy, but there are lazy people in the world. And they need people who are not lazy to show them how not to be that way. So that they can see you and be like, hey, I'm not judging you, but hey, this is how you do it. This is how, this is how you take the next step. And then you, you start doing it and people say, why do you come in early? This is the reason why I come out. And now you have some serious dialogue as to how you got to where you got. Make sense? How people do life without faith, I have no idea. I tried it. I tried to trust me. I tried, I mean, I, I was running with the devil. Man, me and him, was, we were best friends. But man, let me tell you something. When I found Jesus, whole life changed. Everything changed. I don't know what your faith is. I don't know where you're, where you're lying, where you're at. That's, I ain't, that's on you. However, I know when I met Christ, and he met me, he met me in my lowest of lows. But man, I've had some highest of highs walking. And the most thing that I get through my faith is perspective. Grace, mercy, forgiveness, ability to see things differently, ability to kind of look to people and pull them out of stuff, right? Ability to speak life into people. Make, make sense? Take those life experiences that I thought was like really, really bad, and God turns those around, he uses them for a testimony. And I can take all that stuff that I thought that was bad, and I can use it as experimental, as, as, as ex, ex, experience and wisdom to share with other people. Now I can help them overcome the struggles that they were, that they have, by being vulnerable. Which is a hard word, right? Being vulnerable. vulnerable. You mean, yeah, yeah, tell your story because your story has value. Has tremendous value. The enemy would want you to keep it a secret and not share it and not whatever because what he wants you to make people think is that you're perfect. And we're imperfect, serving a perfect God. And God say you overcome by the word of your testimony. The more you share it, the more it helps people have hope to be like, man, like, I thought I was the only one. And I'm not. I'm so glad you shared it with me because now I know, like, I got a chance. And that's what it's all about. Make sense? That's why faith is so important. And guess this other thing. Whatever it is you are willing to believe God for is what you will manifest. Whatever your belief system is, which is tied to your core values, right? Right? It's tied to the core values, the things that you really, really believe in. 
things you know, like, man, you're not going to talk me off the fence that God can't perform miracles because I've seen him do it before. You're not going to talk me off the fence that God can save and redeem people because he redeemed me. And I was crazy. Right? You're not going to talk me off the fence to trust God for things that are bigger that I never dreamed possible. Right? Because I played in the NFL. Never thought it was possible or potentially in my mind for a little bit. But then I, one moment, changed that, right? When somebody said, uh, I don't think you can. I said, what? And everything changed. I needed somebody to tell me that they thought I couldn't do it. It was a very motivation that I needed. For most people, they would have went, maybe you're right. I took it as, nah, you are wrong, bro. Let me show you. Make sense? It's all about how you hear it and how you see it. But whatever you believe God for, that's what you're going to manifest. Habakkuk 2.2 2 says this, right division, make it plain so the ones that seize it will chase after it. Though it tarry, wait for it, for surely if God spoke it, it will come to what? Pass. If you have faith enough to write something down and believe God for it, and if you put it in your heart, it will manifest. It may not be in your timing, but it will what? It will manifest. Make sense? Got it? That's all we got tonight. See God first before anything what? Yep. Yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff you can chase in this world. People, places, things. But the first thing you got to chase is God. You chase him, everything else will take care of itself. Make sense? Great job tonight. Strong together on three.